classes in session. How you doing? And welcome to Unlearn 16 classes in session, guys. Today I'm sitting with Dean. Dean Blendell right here. Oh, hi, Dean. Hi, buddy. How are yes, you? I had to text Dean because, um, guys, social media, especially that lovely little bird app, uh, has really, it's really been, you know, a situation. And then we get the TDSB and the York board here in Ontario trying to sue social media groups and try to ban them and whatever it is they're trying to do. And I thought, unless I start speaking to some real people, I'm going to lose my mind. So, hmm. so yeah, let's that was start. a weird, you, you know how weird it was to get a, a text from you last night saying, Hey, I really would like to talk to some smart people yeah. on a podcast. And I almost sent back, who do you want me to book for you? <laughs> I just, the thing about social media, and then we're going to, I'm going to explain to everybody who's listening, because obviously a lot of people who are listening aren't from Ontario, but I'm going to, the, the thing about social media, you can have this incredible reach, but it can feel very isolating. It can yeah. feel, because you're doing it by yourself. But all of these people can listen to you and respond to you and do whatever. And and so it's this very weird one way thing. And I'm a very social person. I like social media because I'm a very social person. But what I realize is I'm not getting from posts on TikTok or whatever. I don't get that back and forth. Right. I, mm. the, the town hall that I think I would really enjoy. I don't get that because, you know, nobody's in the room. Um quite literally, maybe Anna, maybe my cat. Uh, but in Ontario, so the TDSB, which is the Toronto District School Board, the York Board, and two other boards, I don't know who they are, but do they really matter? Peel, nah, yeah, Peel's another <laughs> one. Yeah, just the GTA school boards. Yes. I'm going to get calls. I'm going to get emails. Well, you got to know that stuff if you're a teacher, right? Oh, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, they, have, <laughs> they have collectively suing or going to sue Interestingly yeah. enough, with an outside lawyer, so a, a litigation lawyer about um, damages, like that kind of thing, they're going to sue all major media companies, social media, TikTok, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, and uh, Facebook, and I'm assuming Twitter. They're going to sue them all because of the damage that is being done to kids, to to the addiction centers and the neural pathways that everybody's arguing that these social media things tap into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the distracted student that we then have to get through the educational system. So that that's the premise of it. I mean, I have my own version, like response to this, but what do you, what do you think? Oh, oh man. Oh. Yeah. It's a great question. You know, I, I'm of the opinion that you can't really, as you aptly put it, put the genie back in the bottle like ever. There are very okay. few instances in, in human experience or time where people have been given a right or been given access to something and we've been able to successfully remove access or that right from that person right. or groups of people, right? Like it's just not something that happens. It's... You know, they say it all the time, be careful who you give your rights to because the chances are they'll never, never give them back. Mm -hmm. Government's famous for it. Uh, authoritarianism is famous for it, where it's like, hey, we're going to do this to protect you from you, right? Mm -hmm. And that's really what this is. But it's like, you know, I hate to shit on the party, but it's like 10 years too late. You know, we've known about the rewiring of neural pathways due to social media. Uh, we're well aware of the studies that Meta, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter buried in regards to what social media, what those notifications, what serotonin and dopamine hits meant to people, how they were rewiring our systems for on demand. And, you know, we are destroying our attention span. And, and these tech and media companies knowingly did this. Like, mm -hmm. They knew what they were doing. Right. And and, you know, the really kind of messed up part and we'll get to the lawsuit in just a second is that through all of this, they managed to convince the government of the United States and the government of Canada that no one should be allowed to sue them for any of it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you shouldn't be allowed to have take, take legal exception with anything that social media might have had a hand in because they're just a tool for messaging. We're just, uh, that's all we are. We're just a tool. But the psyop, the psychology, the academia that went into the psychology 
of social media isn't something that everybody understands. And if you've seen, you know, anything about what it is that people that have left those platforms, you know, whether it's uh, Eli Roth, whether it was, uh, I can't remember the gentleman that left Facebook. I'll come to me. He's now a social media educator. They've been doing Netflix specials. They've been doing symposiums. They've been trying to warn people. They've been appearing in front of Congress for the last five, six years. Like the last five, six years, they've been saying, hey, this is not just a problem. You know, teens are killing themselves because of Facebook and Instagram and social media. People are being hunted down and, and our attention spans are being destroyed. I mean, you know, it, it, is, it is a foregone conclusion that, that these apps have changed our lives, but it's, a, it's an even more foregone conclusion for children who have been brought up in it, who don't know anything else, right? That, you know, in some states, like in Florida, they're going to have that app taken away from them. It might be the only thing those kids know. It might be the only way they know how to get information. And it's oh, a yeah, terrible way to do it. Yeah, TikTok, right? In the case of Ron DeSantis in Florida, we'll just game this out a little bit. Um, the Toronto District School Board plans on suing those people, TikTok, Meta, all the big tech companies, for $4.5 billion for destroying our children. This is, this is not in a microcosm. They have done this. They have done this all over the world. However, however, they don't, they're not talking about the benefit yeah. of social media as well, right? right? They're just not. It has become ingrained in a younger generation to just be able to use these things, connect, contrast, have communities. There are great benefits to the way social media was originally engineered and identified. Mm -hmm. But the reason why people are angry is because it's not only changed our behaviors, bad people have figured out a way to get the algorithm to work, and it's with bad content that has continued to destroy you know, children's lives, destroy their how they feel about themselves in some capacity, destroy their habits in some capacity. And I'd like to get your thoughts. This is just kind of the running tally yeah, 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 yeah. that people talk about in terms of like, yeah. hey, the, 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 all the issues, if you want to put them all in a bucket, you're seeing people now, 10 years after the fact, tell these kids who have grown up with this, telling these, these children who have communities here that, by the way, it's bad for you, and we're going to sue them for making you these little social media robots that can't pay attention in class, mm -hmm. right? That's, and to me, that I don't understand that. I don't understand. I've watched the education system try to comport themselves and use it as a way to kind of stay in kids' lives. But I'd be very interested to get your response because you're a teacher. You've seen the evolution of people using social media in class, right? Well, I, I, and I'm obviously on social media. So let's not forget that inherent bias. Yes. Um, number one. So let's, because let, I really, I just feel as though it's the next thing that we are going to point our finger to and in take it the addiction part away for a second. Let's just take the, let, and I'm going to have to put the algorithm over here because I'm not perfectly educated on that. I will, I will admit that the point is dopamine and serotonin and hit with a notification and do this and do that. But I'm going to put that over here for a second because the same arguments that seemingly get made with every new invention that's been put in our, to our society and that inundates our society, it's this is what's destroying your kids. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you have radio. Oh my God, but you have people controlling the radio and then they're saying this and they're saying that. What, what happens when the, the phone, like the government controlled that? Are we saying there was no ill effects that back in the day when it was just radio, you, you had it at a full pace propaganda machine. Mm -hmm. Then you have, you know, around the same time, you have telephones and then you have televisions and then TV is going to rot your brain. And I know what gives kids bad body images. It's Vogue magazine and it's all the pictures of the models and, and what kids are doing. And I know what's going to rot their stomachs because it's McDonald's and McDonald's shouldn't exist. Be I just would love somebody to point out the difference, because I would argue there isn't much of one, I, I'll, even algorithmically. Because if you're going to tell me that advertisers and television producers and movie makers don't understand how to tap into those things, how to push those, that's the whole point of their existence. 
You bet. The whole point of their existence is to tap into what the culture is afraid of, what they like, what sparks their kind of gladiator worse nature and then push it back out. Why do you think we all watch the real housewives for crying out loud? We're waiting for somebody to flip a table. We're waiting. That's the only thing I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for Nene leaks to throw down because somebody went in her closet or I'm waiting for like, you know, I don't know the people on Beverly Hills, Lisa Vanderpump to lose it on. Look, those are the things we're waiting for. Sure. And so I just don't understand because I've been a teacher right through this whole thing. I'd say when I started teaching, computers were, so 2002, computers were a thing, but not really. Like they didn't have computers in class, right? No, so no one had a smartphone. A li- they knew what a library was. They knew yeah. how to use the card catalog. They might have had to look at microfiche. Like when I was in university, all of it was done in the school okay Remember so microfiche <laughs> i asked a guy for microfiche i went for a tour with my friend's kid at um sheridan college and we were yeah. in one of their libraries i said can you show me where the microfiche is this guy looked at me like i asked him like show me the leprechauns in the back room like there mm-hmm. he's like what is that like, again i now? think i've heard of that i'm like screw you son get out i don't even want screw you sonny <laughs> But, you know, and so I started then and, and it's funny kids, and I'm so many teachers are going to disagree with me, but let me say this too. I work in a very particular environment, right? I have 12 to 15 kids in my class different than 30 to 35 kids. And that's mm-hmm. what I think the school boards aren't really acknowledging and they should be pushing this a little more full court. If I'm going to say what's caused more harm to our students and you're not going to sue the government, you're not going to sue the defunding of education. You're not going to sue the idea that every kid passes no matter what. You're not going to sue the government based on tons of different learning abilities and IEPs and learning strategies in one classroom and then putting one teacher in charge of that and wondering why they're not making so much more input into their child's work. I'm just telling, I'm telling you statistically Mm. what's more work and what's, what's a bigger weight because kids have always had a short attention span. Yeah. I want to know. Besides the kid that sat there straight and stared at the board because somebody's going to hit them with something heavy, I want to know where these great attention spans were. Somebody said to me the other day, like, yeah, you know, it was so much better back in the day. We didn't have our phones. I'm like, do you have any idea how much effort went into writing a note, folding a note, and transporting the note from me to my friend across the room? That's a two-hour expedition. (laughs) Time-wise, is it quicker for me to be like, um, I like so-and-so, what do you think they think of me? Let's have lunch in the cafeteria at this time. Um, I'll see you after school. Send. Or (laughs) me sitting there writing out a full page of note, folding it like I have a PhD in origami, and then judiciously. Yeah. Secretly, covertly getting it across the room so my French teacher doesn't grab it and read it in front of the whole class. Yeah. Well, you got to, your past game has to be awesome uh, in just, school if you don't have a smartphone. Yeah. I'm just wondering, you know. That's a great point. And I also think, whole, like, we're, we're really taking the responsibility way away from parents. Well, Do parents have any responsibility anymore? Well, only in the prairies. They want all of it. Um, you know, I, I have to, and I have to, I, I, it is worth saying there are different aspects. There's minutia to the social media ah. conversation when it comes to kids, right? There, yeah. there really is. And I, 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 I can't project that onto my kids. I can't say it's bad for you because when I grew up and you brought something up earlier in the conversation, when I grew up, I would always, you know, I'd be in front of the TV when my parents got home. I would go get a snack during it was commercials. Never off. I'd run. My TV never, off. never was off. I love Lucy, little love boat right um, after that. Yeah. Um, Captain Steubing. Remember him, Julie McCruz, Julie McCoy, the cruise director. She was awesome. Um, <laughs> and, 
And if I watch too much, my parents would go, why are you rotting your, your mind? Like you're, why are you like, go do something outside. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I get that. And I'd feel guilty about watching too much TV and I go outside and eventually the draw of TV came back because it was informing me. I was taking information in. Yeah. I would get dopamine hits from the excitement on television. It's what we were all really it's the, the original social media. Fast mm-hmm. forward 50 years, right? I said to my son the other day, dude, why don't you turn on the TV and watch a movie <laughs> all night long? And he's like, why? I got YouTube. I can watch like 5,000 movies in an hour. And I don't have to worry about it. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. And I'm wrestling with the idea if that's bad or not. Right? You know how much my kids, my kids said the other day, um, Joanne, I was watching this TikTok and it talked about the JFK because we we did the whole JFK thing. These are grade eights, okay? Talked about the JFK thing. So I went and looked it up. This is the part. Where I have an issue. This is the part where if, in my opinion, instead of trying to ban something that you're not going to ban, you're not going to, it's just, I I feel like it's an asinine uh, uh, goal. But is that the goal of the lawsuit in in Toronto with the Toronto District School Board? Is it to ban certain apps from schools? No, it's to, well, they're suing them for money. So I'm assuming when they sue them for money, if they can prove a direct causal, which they won't be able to, between the creation of the algorithm and then an in, individual kids, right? Who, yeah. by the way, who, by the way, are only on social media because their parents have allowed it. They gave them the phone. Mm-hmm. Unless there's a 14-year-old going out and get a Rogers plan. I don't know. When I got my Rogers plan, I had to give a blood sample. I had to give a bank statement. I had to give eight months. Like, they're a serious company, Go right? clippings, kind of like the, the government ID. Uh, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your parents are getting you that. So, and, and I understand that computers can access it and everything can access it. So you have all of these points of access. And I'm just wondering I, if they try to blame, I mean, it's the, the point is if we can blame them for this, then maybe we can get them to change their algorithm. Let me tell you what their algorithm's goal is, to make money. If we would finally have the conversation that we need to have, that the right wing refuses to have, and and mostly the left, to be perfectly honest, Mm -hmm. is the fact that when we set up corporations in this country, their only goal, legal goal, is how much money can you make for your shareholders? And the minute you stop trying to make more money, the minute you do something ethical or Mm -hmm you know, in, in the essence of justice and fairness, the minute you do that and it costs you money, you're going to get sued as a company because that's not what corporations are trying to do. In my opinion, the, the goal of social media and television and, and, and everything in our, in our food, we, we're going we're gonna to let go of our food, by the way. We're going to talk about... <laughs> We're going to talk about and ban and sue social media for addictive possibilities. And nobody's going to talk about sugar. No, nobody is. Nobody's going to talk about sugar. Nobody's going to talk about gambling ads, fire hosed at them. Nobody's talking about any of that. Nobody's talking about sugar. The most, the single worst thing you can, and and coming from somebody, let's understand the hypocrisy of what I'm about to say right now. A bit of a sugar maven. Yeah. I yeah. love, I, okay, I'm serious, look. What do you got, I, Popeye, Popeye candies? Got a little Popeye candy. Oh, there you go. It's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown cereal, look, little Kellogg's. I am a product of that. But what, what I am saying is you, we are just picking and choosing and there is no real concerted effort to really do what's in the best interest of a society as whole. Because again, as soon as we start doing that too, to a different level, you somebody gets to decide what is, if you're going to say what's bad, you're going to have to start saying what's good. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you from firsthand experience, because I, I educate about it. I talk about it. I put it in the curriculum, which by the way, 10 years ago, it should have been a class media literacy, social media advocacy and support and how to protect yourself and what the pitfalls are and what this looks like and how easy it is to manipulate We should be teaching our kids that across the board. Yeah. Instead of just telling kids, get the hell off your phone. 
are we dumb? It's bad for you. Teach Remember them that? how to yeah. use it. Yeah. Because there's a huge component of it where they can now watch videos of a kid in Russia. They can now listen to, um, you know, explanations about historical events in South Africa. They, they can do all this stuff. And we constantly treat our kids like they're morons and they're mm. not. They, they will go down the roads of, of just watching stupid crap. Well, I've just rewatched Felicity. We all have our crosses to bear. We all watch stupid crap, but if they're going to go down that road, there are still so much better things that they can access, they can control, they can curate yeah. when it comes to social media that they cannot curate when it comes to sitting in front of one teacher all day, myself included, when it comes to sitting in front of the television, when it comes to reading, you know, only one newspaper or watching one news program, all of that to me. Mm -hmm is much more controlling, contrived, and manipulative mm. than social media. That's such a great point. Uh, you, you, you know, it's, I love talking to you because you have this ability to um, say, okay, well, if that is what it is, let's hold it up. Let's beta yeah. test what that is against, against what we think it is, what we use it for. In the case of social media, you know, you look at... Let's just do it. TDSB lawsuit, four point five billion. We're going to sue all the big tech people for screwing over our kids. You it's because they up. need four point five billion because Doug Ford took it. Yeah, you, there you go. They're, they had a four point one billion uh, shortfall over the past couple of years, so they think they're going to grab a little <laughs> easy money for tech <laughs> giants. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a performative nature to that too, right? Um, and then you look at, uh, as you've pointed out, not just the lack of funding, class sizes. Uh, the inability to keep kids in school, keep kids engaged. I can tell you this from my son's perspective. He went to school for half a day, grade 12, and had to take a night class at seven o'clock this year. Grade 12, taking a night class. This is because there was no room for him in the school that he goes to. There was no room in the classroom. That's so they had a runoff class and they're like, you're going to fucking go to this night school class. That's Aced all of it because he's, he's, he's an honor roll student. He got into the, uh, to, to Guelph. He's a happy, smart kid. Uh, and we don't complain about those things. But to your point, you want to talk about what's good? Let's talk about what's bad. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the wholesale context of what this lawsuit is all about. Yeah. To your point, they've burned down the education system in this country. They continue to underfund it. Um, and they need somebody to blame. They need like a wag the dog sort of, they need, they need a straw man. They need someone they can point at and go, look at that. They wrecked our kids. They've wrecked the inner education system. So put that aside. There's a little bit of context there. And then put this aside is that all of the teachers in that school use TikTok and every single version of those, those social media platforms to communicate with their kids. Mm -hmm. My son has a great relationship with his English teacher, teaches a little bit of philosophy as well. They catch each other on DMs. They show each other. They, 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 they share information. Those are good, good things, right? Those are great things. Sharing information with your friend, finding out how they do, you know, different versions of who, what you are, activities your age in different countries, connecting with classrooms. We did an anti-bullying thing on social media for the past two years with Pink Shirt Day. Yeah. And we absolutely targeted that at, at younger people because we wanted younger people to hear about how older people had gotten through bullying. There are wonderful, wonderful aspects to social media in terms of sharing and educating, but generally speaking, it's not what it's being used for. However, however, I love the performance part of this for the government of Ontario. And I also love the performance part of this for Florida. And I want to read this to you. This is these these are performative things. We can talk about the damage that social media has done in terms of behaviors. That's one thing, right? And in terms of bad actors, that's another thing. But in in itself, it is inherently just this thing. It's this thing that that rewards you when you use it. The goal is for them to make money and keep you on the app. There are tips, tricks, psyops that you do for it. They affect all of us, not just our kids. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that you're not addicted to your phone at times too. Don't tell me you're not flipping for an hour at night two hours at night going through your social media accounts. But in Florida, the bill is called HB3, okay? It's considered the most restrictive social media ban bill in the United States. It takes effect January 1st of 2025, if it passes. Now, the law is interesting. Some critics said it's not going to stand up because too many people use it. 
However, the bill was championed by super conservative Republican Speaker Paul Renner, (laughs) who highlighted the social media's addictive technologies. Okay. This is a big problem. He said a child in their brain doesn't have the ability to know they're being sucked into these addictive technologies and see harm and step away from it. Because of that, we've, we've got to step in for them. We've got to step in for them. Sure. We, we need to teach them about how to not be addicted to technology. We're all addicted to technology. That, that is the loosest, dumbest argument on the planet. We are all addicted to it. We all use it. We cannot function without it. He's telling, he's telling children, you're too young to have it. You're just too young to have it. You're not going to benefit from it. The damage outweighs anything you could possibly use, see, anything to make you feel good. You'll never be able to figure it out because we don't trust your parents to teach you, and we think you're too stupid to understand it. That's the message that gets sent there. Florida, we're, and, and by the way, the ban... If you're under the age of 13, you're not allowed to have a social media account at all. When you turn 14 in Florida, that's the design of this bill. When you turn 14, you can have one, but it has to come with the consent of the parents and you, they need to give how? their government identification. Oh, so that's how they'll monitor it. Bingo. Government identification. Yeah. Listen, part of me doesn't mind the idea. Here, there, There's a, a problem in a in a and a benefit from this. Part of me doesn't mind the idea that if you are going to create a social media account and you are going to interact with it, part of me really doesn't mind the idea that that account needs to be connected directly to a person. So when that person, let's be like, ignore the 13 year old, that person goes off and says and does horrible things and harasses and blah, blah, blah. You know exactly whose door to knock at to deal with them in the real world. That I like, that I don't mind. I am so tired of people on social media. This is where I think the flaw is who get to stand behind anonymity Mm. and have complete purview to say and do and, and harass or, or, whatever, however they deem appropriate. I do have a huge, sure. I have a huge problem. Now people have said to me, yeah, but I can't, I can't say who I am or else I can't have an opinion because of my job, because of my Mm -hmm. family, because of this, because of that. And I'm like, okay, but there should, there still should be a connecting. So when you cross a legal line, when you are defaming, when you are writing libelous claims about people on the internet, mm-hmm. I don't even, it should be simple. You know, you called me, you know, everybody likes, everybody's favorite freaking word is a groomer. You better have proof. Or you now get to pay me $5,000 for the claim. That's an mm-hmm. easy, that just, that just goes right to the ticket office. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like you get a red light ticket. Oh, it's oh, you called idea. somebody something with no proof? Cool. Here it is. You called somebody a criminal. You called some, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. I think teaching kids how to have better conversations, because the biggest problem aren't the kids. Mm-hmm. The biggest and most disgusting problem on social media apps Adult. are adults. The kids aren't on there. It's so funny. We keep talking about kids getting bullied and this and that and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God. But kids just will be like, oh, your shirt's ugly. Adults go so hard in the paint that people are getting lawyers and suing and, and, and security and cameras and, 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 and that's what adults are doing. Yeah. So you know what I would really like to see? Somebody make a, somebody make laws talking about when you over, I'm also not a big fan of censorship. You and I have spoken about this. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, you potatoes. Say everything you want to say. Just know that libel and defamation and, and harassment and threats all have very legal consequences. Do they though anymore? That's 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 what they should. Well, they they should. should. I know. And I had this. Why are we upping those laws? Can you imagine, Dean, if we upped those laws, if we made Twitter and ticked and all of these things, if we said, listen, when you, if you, somebody prints libel and you don't do anything about it, then 
We want their name to be sent to the police so they can be charged or they can be sued or whatever needs to happen. And you need to take that crap down. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. either have proof or just like everything else, stop talking about the damn person and talk about the issue, which is what I say to everybody who likes to talk about my hair, talk about blah, blah, blah. And I'm this person and I'm woke and I'm, I'm like, give me an issue. What specifically have I said or have I stood for that? you disagree with. I would love to have that conversation. We're babies, aren't we? Let's the adult that. species. Yes. We're babies. You, you know, know I mean? why the kids, the kids are just parroting the kids, yep. everything that is being, um, what's the word I'm looking for modeled by their parents, by everybody else, the way yep. they interact it, that is being, we are modeling it for them. So everything that is disgusting that goes on on the internet, that's not the 13 year old. And you know, That's it's, us. it's funny how they're the target of every solution in that space. Of course they are. And they're also the reason and the victim of every major thing in that space. But I haven't seen a 13 year old call another 13 year old a name <laughs> and go and, uh, sue that 13 year old. I haven't seen, you know, a mobbing, social media mobbing of a 13 year old, I've seen it of by adults exclusively. Mm-hmm. And those adults are now trying to say kids, kids, this is how stupid it is. This is so bad for you. Kids, this is so bad for you. You need to leave this to us. And all they do is misappropriate it all the time. You know, and, and it's, and it's funny because it is hypocrisy at its finest. You know, when anybody says we need to take care of the kids and it's always the focus of everything now, isn't it? Right. If we extrapolate that out. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, you know, the it's like your button that they're yeah. pressing, right? Yeah. Oh, well, we can't, we can't allow, we we need to like, it's think fun. about this. The government of Ontario is suing, yeah, they're suing, the suing big tech for, for saying, you know what? Our kids aren't learning anymore. We're suing big tech. Do you think the school boards, and this is obviously my ignorance. Snowflakes. The school boards have to be friends with Doug. Uh, every school board involved in that lawsuit has uh, a big swing in you know what that was put there, appointed by Doug Ford. There we go. Absolutely. Same with police boards that did there absolutely nothing during the gen- the uh, convoy. There it Same is. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Oh, this is an operation. Don't. That's yeah. not... It, it, like, because when I think about a school board and what they should be demanding, mm-hmm. I forget that they're an arm of whatever government is in power. Because I yes. think so friggin' st- like, uh, uh, sometimes I am a potato. I think that they're there to fight for better education, better conditions, better classroom facilities, better teachers, blah, oh. blah. No, they're not. That's what the union does. Yeah. The game is fighting for all of those classroom things, all of those educational things. I I, I don't know. Even the union, because at the end of the day, the union's job is to fight for teachers. That's their mm-hmm. job. That's, that's a collective bargaining labor union. Mm-hmm. Whose job is it to advocate? And then I think, is it the Ministry of Education or they all work for whoever's in charge now? Like if... If I joined, if I got a job at the Ministry of Education, sometimes I'm like, I want that job. Mm -hmm. And I think, do I? Because then I have to push all of the crap. I just talked to somebody who works in the Simcoe board. And he said, you know what? You can't, you can't fail anybody. I said, what? You, n- oh, is that still failed. is that still a thing? Remember, we used to nobody mock that all the time because I got failed a lot, and I'm a, and my son For was now, like, "No, nobody fails anymore." I'm like, nobody what? fails. Here's what happens: a kid doesn't come to your class. They come to ten classes. They don't hand anything in. They get twenty seven. You fail them. It goes to the principal. Do they fail? Sometimes the principal just says, "Nope, we're going to pass them." And then if it doesn't, it goes to remediation. So their file, let's say they uh, history 10, their file then goes to a remediation team and they call this kid in and they sit down and write another test or a couple papers and they get the goddamn credit. You want to see the damage being done for accountability, for responsibility, for why would a kid ever have an attention span? What is the, right? 
And then I think to myself, okay, because I always try to think of the other side. There are lots of kids who just don't want to be in school and would rather at 14 years old been out the door and getting a job. And 20 years ago, Dean, they would have been. They would have been kicked out. They would have quit. They would have just left and nobody would have done anything about it. Now we want them to get their high school diploma. And so by doing this remediation thing, we're at least going to get them their high school diploma. But what value does that have anymore? If they can't read or write, not much. What value? Yeah. Nothing. It has zero value. You don't just hand it out when they're born then. Here's your high school diploma. Here's your high school diploma. Have a good day. Go about your, you know, everybody's talking about how school doesn't mean anything and, and college and blah, blah, blah. Here's why. We have changed the expectations because they're a damn business. Yeah. Everything we do that gets messed up comes right back down to when you, when you magnify or you highlight or you um, put capitalistic money gain ahead of intelligent, thoughtful, critical analysis that needs to be had every Perfect. time you do that. Mm -hmm. You lessen the education. So in high school, guess what? The government doesn't want to pay for you to retake the courses, so you pass. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. University, they want to keep you. You want to be a kid that barely, well, the university, you're still a meal ticket now. Yeah. That's and, a business. Yeah. And, and you know, it's funny how they'll even change those businesses. Certain governments, depending on the ideology, will even change those educational business models for people, depending on, you know, we just went through that foreign student thing, right? You know, where foreign students oh, yeah. in Canada, for people that don't know, um, are allowed to come to Canada. In some cases, there are dozens, maybe hundreds of para organizations that will help these students also get visas to come to Canada. Canada, very well sought after democracy, social democracy, where people from all over the world want to send their kids to go to school. It's incredibly safe. We have really strict gun laws. The education system and institutions here are very good. But I've only come into this information over the past few years, right? Because I've got sons that have been through university, are going to university, and they pay seven to $12,000 for their school for the year, right? Depending on blah, blah, blah. like that, just, just the actual tuition. One of my sons goes to school, in fact, is dating someone who is from another country who is here as a foreign student. Mm -hmm. She pays six times that amount. Oh yeah. Six times yeah. that amount for the same education. U of T is like balling down there. Cause you got to yeah. know U of T is the only school in China that has any value. You you don't if you're if you're coming from China and you're going to and you're it may be Waterloo for the engineering, but I would say 90% they want them to go to U of T and U of T is making insane money. Now here's the funny part. I I don't care. I don't care that foreign students are competing with our students cuz a lot of people they're taking our spots and I'm like get smarter. What I do care about, though, is this. <laughs> I love that. Uh, it's the same Arthur, dude that's like the same guy that's Trump. driving a truck, and he's like really pissed off that a guy came from Afghanistan and opened up a medical a clinic. Driver. And he's like, they're now, taking our jobs. I'm like, you're in no danger of becoming a physician anytime now, soon. Here, here's my, here is my issue. Yeah. When you have them paying so much more, there's a vested interest in them filling spots. That is a capitalistic flaw. Absolutely. I want the best and the brightest in the world. Absolutely. But the best and the brightest isn't being determined by this system. The people with the most money, as it always friggin' is, is determining this system. Yep. Um, and we have an inability, and this has always been a thing, and I don't know how, I don't even know the solution. I know I pretend to know everything, but I don't know the solution to adequately compare student versus student, because I know it's not standardized tests, but I also know it can't be like test scores. I, it, it also can't be because if it's just what, what percentage I got in high school, well, I went to Anderson Whippy and I'm going to, I'm going to do this shout out right now. Everybody and their brother knew that if you went to Anderson, you got a 90, that was a real 90. If you went to Henry, which is the other opposing high school, when you got a 90, it meant like a 70, but they just really liked it. <laughs> that's 
and every they all team knew what, they, they're, they're all like study the test here are the main concepts and they just put down the test look that happens all over the place yeah. so in that situation and again it's a money issue but in that situation because that's what's going on in a lot of private schools right you give me you give me $5,000 I'll give you a 90 have a nice day sir mhm mhm when that's happening, that's the biggest problem. And and the Ministry of Education, in my opinion, I don't know how you mitigate that. Because, for example, the ministry comes into every private school and they'll sit down and they'll go for, for like an afternoon every two years. And they'll sit down. Let's say they're, the ministry comes into my classroom, which they don't because mostly they just care about English, science, and math. But if they were to sit in the lowly history classroom... <laughs> They're going to look at my book, right? My curriculum. Am I following the curriculum? What are my notes look? What do my tests look like? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Dean, I can make up that freaking package in about 37 minutes. And it would look beautiful. It would look, there is no way to accurately assess the truthfulness of that by you spending a half an hour in my room. You really want to understand what's going on in a school. You got to talk to parents. You got to talk to former students who are willing to sell them down the river because they will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you need to spend time in that classroom. Mm -hmm. Watch me teach. Don't, I don't know how this happens, by the way. Because uh, you're using your phone and you get the old uh, thumbs up. Anytime you do, do a hand know, gesture, you might get, yeah, there you go. Happen. There you go. No, I know. Happen. I can't either. My girlfriend and I do it all the time where I'm like trying to do the thumbs up. I can't I find do it. Offensive. And I suck. Well, you anyway. should. Um, but all of these things, these things that we're trying to assess, right? And we've been trying to assess them for so many years. And everybody's like, we got to go back to the old school ways. We can't, we can't go back to basics. We're no longer living in a basic world. Yeah. You want us to go back to basics? I don't need to churn my own butter. And I sure as hell don't need to use an abacus. What I do need to understand is what media liter literacy looks like, what a valid source looks like, how to have actual intellectual debates and discussions about truth versus fiction, about how truth is very nuanced and perspective matters. All of that needs to be happening. All of that needs to be happening in every single course you teach. The first thing I do, and I know I've said this to you before, but I'll hold up my history book and it's like 450 pages. And in Canadian history, it's from 1914 to 2000. And I'll hold up the 450 pages and I'll say to the students, what's the problem with this book? And they'll be like, history's boring. I'm like, dial it down. Fine, history's boring. What's the second problem with this book? And usually I'll have one kid that'll say, well, it seems a little... Dated? Limited. Well, besides that, yeah. Some kid will be saying, well, it was written in you know 2010. I'm like, okay, but let's assume... Let, let, I know this is a big assumption. Let's assume that they actually wrote history. They, you know, nothing's changing. Yeah. <laughs> Again, huge assumption because we ignore residential schools forever. Um, yeah, and finding out about those at the age of fifty wasn't fun growing up I in this country. By the way, anyway. Yeah. But let's assume that the fact checking of the books has gotten a lot better, and and there's a lot more real information in there. Let's assume for a minute. A hundred percent of those 450, there's not a single lie. And then I'll have one kid go, what's missing? Mm. 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 99% and of history is missing. That's what's missing from that book. And I'm going to sit you down. I'm going to tell you this is it. No, nah, you can't. Well, and that's the problem that we face today in, in media, in education in conversations <clears throat> is that we all want to point fingers, right? Like what makes us feel good and safe. And I, know, I know we all want to point order. fingers, but you know, if you know about the world's history and you do how many times the world's history has been wiped out by people who don't want you to know the truth about the world's history, your yeah. government's history, your people's history, the history of your religion, the history of your culture, the history of the British people, the history of the Greeks, the Romans, the history of 
uh, the, 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 the Khan dynasty. Like there are a lot of people who don't want to know the uncomfortable truths and those uncomfortable truths have been changed over time. Right. So like, we all understand that to your point, that history book is not a real accurate look at history. It's the institution of Canada as a whole and whoever curated that back in the day, it's their best guess, according to the lies that those researchers were told were part of our history. Some of them are not true. Right. Like you point out residential schools or the genocide of indigenous people, with smallpox blankets, like absolutely not involved in our text. I remember when I was in the fifth grade going, isn't that nice? We came over here on these boats and these natives. uh, Absolutely. The Indian people gave us corn and we gave them like a couple of belts and taught them how to read. And they taught us how to farm. How fucking awesome is that? That's what I learned when I was a kid. That was a history book. That was grade five, grade six. Remember Mr. Hassan teaching me that in class and me going, what a lovely place Canada is. Colonialism sounds like a fun barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> like I was legitimately thinking that. But, Colonialism. But you have a real-time look at history every time you open up social media, every time you go online, depending on who you trust and what you read. This is what I'm talking about. I, exactly. I have a kid. Look, if we're only relying on your grade five history teacher or we're relying on a kid that can watch seven-minute videos on the history of, you know, seven minute videos on the history of the, I don't know, the Han dynasty. I'm telling you right now, that kid's more educated than we were in grade five by a landslide. And we're all bitching and complaining. He only can watch seven minutes. That's better seven minutes than we ever spent. And he was enthralled for all seven minutes because it came with a multimedia presentation and it came with slide decks that he could understand and information that was easily digestible. And maybe it was real. Like there's the off chance that maybe it was real history he was consuming in seven minutes to your point, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Maybe it was the off chance. It was like real information that kid like, like, you know, yes, people try to misguide you, but what technology has been able to do is be the antidote. Like, you know, the truth that we antidote we have. Exactly. It's been, isn't that totally, it's been, go ahead. When Anna was in Quebec. That's where she got her, I, she, she said this to me the other day. She goes, well, because she learned about, for those who don't know any history about Canada, uh, ori- obviously originally all the indigenous people, but apparently we ignore that. The first founding people that settled and colonized here were French and then the English came and then they went to war. Anyways, yeah. when Anna was learning about, I'm really the English up. one. That's why it's an English speaking country and Quebec, we can find right? the French to Quebec. Quebec. Yes. Learning about the plains of Abraham and that fight. And you remember the cliff yep. that they came up that everybody learns and they snuck up at night. Well, yep. when Anna was being taught it, she was taught, <laughs> I can't even say it out loud. She was taught by her teacher that the British broke the rules of war because they fought at night and there was a rule. There was no night fighting. So she grew up thinking that, uh, that the Plains of Abraham was won because the British were sneaky bugs who who just ignored the rules of war and had the audacity <laughs> to sneak up on us at night. Yeah. The yeah, class right. didn't talk about the slaughter of the indigenous people and colonization and residential schools, but those British people really yeah. did screw us over. You know, there was this rule, you only fought during the day, and those sneaky fuckers, they came <laughs> after us at night. It was what like, about the genocide? What about all that? I'm like, I want, I, want, I, want, I want whatever your history notes. <laughs> I would kill for history notes from 30 years ago. I really, yeah. truly, my history notes, I'd kill. Dean, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to pause everybody who's listening right now. Yes, ma'am. We are going to flip over to Dean's podcast. So this is yes, going to be ma'am. part one. Or Mm -hmm. Dean will be, yeah, this will be part one. No, you're part one, yeah. Flip over to Dean's podcast and you guys can catch us for part two because we have a lot more to argue. There you go. Come and join us, the Dean Blundell Show next. Flip over to Dean Blundell. This will come out Tuesday morning. He'll put it out Tuesday morning. You can go from one to the other, clean as day. And I'll see you guys over on his channel. And I'll see you back here next Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel. Dismissed.